Hi there, welcome, welcome to Home Keepers. Such a delight to be with you, my friend, day after day. I'm glad you're with us. And I kind of encourage you to sit down with a cup of tea and watch this program all the way through because it's a memorial. It's a memorial program to one of our semi-regular guests. He was on several times a year for many years for the whole network. And that's attorney Joe Pippen. And his home going was very, very sudden. And we want to honor him and give you a few clips of some of the times he was here with us. And I've asked uh, Wanda and Stephanie to um, fix, it's a casserole that Wanda fixes when she uh, takes a food offering to a bereaved family. It's something to think about the comfort and the uh, kindness that some food means to a family that's in grief. And so I'm going to turn it over to the girls and uh, perhaps you can think of some of the things that where you could help someone or you could look back and think, I could have been more helpful. Food is a great entry. Go ahead, girls. We are honored to be on the show today that uh, is a memorial for Joe Pippen. Mm -hmm. We mourn with those that are still here, but boy, do we rejoice knowing yeah. that we know where he is with Jesus. Amen. So I'm on the hospitality team. I'm in charge of the hospitality team at church. Awesome. That's so great. So this is right up my alley. Yeah. We get asked a lot, what can we do? Listen, don't call somebody and say, what can I do for you? Yeah. Call them and say, I'm bringing you a meal. Yeah. Call and say, I'm going to the store. What can I pick up for you? They're not going to tell you what they want. I promise right. you. 95% exactly of people won't tell you they need help. Been there, done that. When I went through breast cancer, Wanda showed up at my house with a meal. That's what you do. Okay, yeah. so this is a perfect meal for that. It truly is because you can make it as simple as you want, which we did for today, mm -hmm. or you can make it a little more complicated. I choose the simple. Yes. You know, and, it's, and it tastes great. Yes. So we simply just got a, a rotisserie. Mm -hmm. And by the way, we broke this recipe down in half for today, but when I send you the recipe, it'll be for a 139 baking dish. So I just did the uh, chicken here and chunked it up like that. Yes, I I'm gonna get butter and water out of the yes. microwave, right, that yep. we heated up. I heated that up because what you're gonna do is we're gonna make easy cornbread stovetop uh, stuffing. And so it says to take one and a half cups of water and butter, but just follow the package directions and you're fine. Right, so I'm gonna put this in there so it starts soaking it up. Listen, Absolutely. a lot of people say, I don't know how to cook, I can't. You mm -hmm. don't have to know how to cook to do this. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it's it's really kind of so simple and it makes yes. you look really good and they all think you're a great cook yes. and, and that's what we all want in the end anyhow. So And a rotisserie chicken, you don't even have to cook, you just no. pick it up. Right. And if you're yeah, and, and if, you, great if you go to Costco, there are four dollars and ninety nine cents. So it's a loss leader for <laughs> Costco. That's what they do to get you in the store. I promise. I'm I've you. seen it. I've seen the news the news stories on it. So yep. go you can go get it at Costco, Sam's, any grocery a lot of grocery stores have them. Right. So I put butter, water, and the stuffing in here. Yep. And I'm gonna let it soak it up. You've put rotisserie chicken in here. Yep, and then um, this is, um, your recipe will call for one can of cream of chicken soup and uh, sour cream. So this is half of each. I think it calls for 12 ounces originally, but this is six ounces, give or take a few, but it's here. Yes. So this will be kind of your like your sauce and you're thinking, oh, how's that gonna turn out? But trust me, it really, so really good. does. It's comfort food, I promise you. <laughs> I, I, you know, I will take this and do a, a nice salad for someone mm -hmm. and then I, I usually make like a, a cobbler. Yes. And this is a little bit thick and you think, mm, oh, is it gonna be enough? But trust me, it will. You can spread it out. Yep. It's so good. All right. I can smell the stuffing. I can smell the chicken. It's I'll tell you what, I think sour cream with any, any with any cream of chicken soup or whatever is just yes. divinely good. I love it, personally speaking, but and you don't have to use cornbread stuffing. No. You can use chicken. If you That's have right. leftover turkey, you can yep. use turkey in here yep. and then use the turkey stuffing. Exactly. You can do it different routes. Absolutely. Yes. Which is okay. what I like about it. I'm so, making a mess here. Rotisserie then. chicken, cream of chicken, sour cream. You mm -hmm. put that in a, in a sprayed buttered pan, right? Right. I did. Okay. Yep. So we're done with this little mess. Then you and do I'm your next, thing. I'm next, right? Put this in the, you are next. I'm going to put the stuffing on top. Oh, I love stuffing. It's I know, like too. It's more like my favorite. 
You know, and, and it's it's really weird. A lot of people, I shouldn't say that because I'm going to get, somebody's <laughs> going to say something to me about it. I, you know, for, for Thanksgiving, a lot of people use the stovetop stuffing. I've used stovetop stuffing. I, I've always done mine homemade. I put some in the bird. I put some yeah. in the pan because my husband likes it big. Okay. okay, so when you get to this stage and you think, what else can we do but add a little more butter? Yes. So we, we cubed it, and we're going to just add some on the top. Mm -hmm. You're going to bake this one at 325 for about 25, 30 minutes. If, it's, uh, if you're doing it the same day, like a couple hours before you want to take it somewhere, um, and it's not been in the refrigerator overnight, it may cook in about 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. If it's overnight, I'd sit it out on my counter for a few minutes and then go ahead and... Um, It'll take a little bit longer to bake. Do you want to cover it initially? or Initially, I do cover it, especially when it comes out of the refrigerator mm -hmm. because um, it's so cold, and and if it stays in the oven too long, it gets real crusty, and I kind of like don't like that. So cover it with aluminum foil first, yep. and then what, the last 10, 15 minutes? Yeah, uncover it, and then mm -hmm. it gets just like, mm, just like you like it. There Very we go. So, so we're going to bring, we're going to show you what it looks like coming out of the oven. So... Do you, look at it's delicious. I'm already telling you. I already know. It has a wonderful flavor. So good. The butter has melted, mm -hmm. meshed in. Okay. Go ahead, Steph. Want me to get it for you? Sure. You want to try it? Sure. I'll be the trier today. Yep. You're gonna like it. Tell me. Okay. Oh, Here, it's don't... nice and hot too. I can see the steam. It's really hot. <laughs> be careful. You don't burn your. Okay. We're gonna be careful. Okay. So, oh, I love stuffing. Uh, it's all berry. I know it's good. Careful. Careful. Isn't it good? It's so, so good. Yeah, I love it. So good. Thank you, Wanda, so You're much. You're welcome. You can get this recipe. You can email Wanda. You can um, mail a self-addressed stamped envelope. The Absolutely. information's coming up on the screen. And now we're going to, uh, after the offer, we're going to go to Arthleen. And she's going to tell you about Joe Pip. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. If you're a longtime viewer of the Christian Television Network, no doubt you have watched at least one interview with attorney Joe Pippen. It might have been with Herman Bailey, Bob DeAndre, or with me here on Homekeepers. In recent days, I have watched those interviews and discovered a treasure trove of information that has undoubtedly been a blessing to thousands of our viewers. Now, let me say, I have a living will. Mm -hmm. And I do, too. You made it for me. <laughs> and I, I, most of my clients, I'd say 90% of my clients have living wills. Mm -hmm. And the reason I have one is that I don't want my family to have to make that decision. Right number one, and if I'm in a vegetative or unconscious or in stage condition, I'm, I'm ready to go. Joe was a devoted churchman, and beside his law practice, television appearances, and a long-running radio program, he loved to help Christians by going to their churches, and he conducted special seminars to help them with those end-of-life issues. I love going into churches. I just did one, went into a, a church the other night, and if somebody called me, and if it's open to my calendar, I'll go. And mm -hmm. it could be a couple hour drive, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And basically what I talk about when I go into churches is uh, estate planning, of course, and being a good steward of what you have. I think you're charged with being, uh, having the duty of being a good steward, providing, um, a steward, providing for mm -hmm. your family. Uh, doing wise things, saving, probate. You don't have to go through probate, saving taxes and really, uh, really taking care of special needs within families. Mm -hmm. There's so many, there's so many families, almost every family has some dysfunction, you know, in it. So as an estate planning attorney, I like to, uh, I ask enough questions, if there is some dysfunction, I want to find it and then deal with it in the estate plan. For example, you know, uh, if you have three or four children, there's a good chance one of them is going to go through marital difficulties. You want to protect the estate for your bloodline, not the mm -hmm. in-laws. Uh, sometimes you have children with drug or alcohol addictions. You don't want to give them a lump sum of money. You want to have them go through testing programs and so forth before they get their inheritance and be free, free and clear. Their wow, I never thought of that. are children That's... on government benefits where if you give them a lump sum of money, they lose their benefits. So one of the things on the Medicaid uh, book, we talk about if you know anybody in a nursing home and they're on private pay, 
six, seven, eight thousand dollars a month. There, there are ways to rearrange things and get the government benefits they're entitled to. Mm -hmm. On the asset protection book, there are, are ways to protect your estate. If you have a small business, you, you want to be incorporated. And then you do want a limited liability company, an S corporation, a C corporation. It goes through the various ways that you can, um, how do you protect your assets? Because of his radio career of more than 30 years, Joe was certainly that go-to attorney for wills and trusts here in the Tampa Bay area. We talked about the value of free information and advice over the airways. Also, the examples of some very famous people. For example, but it didn't have anything in it. He, did, he forgot to fund his trust. There's been a Supreme Court justice who tried to write their own will, you know, me, me and mainly in constitutional a law. A Supreme like Court me, justice? And he didn't have it witnessed. I mean, so people can do make mistakes that really try yeah. it. These, these legal sites that suggest you per purchase a will or a trust, most all of those I've reviewed, uh, there have been mistakes in them. And they didn't have the opportunity to go one-on-one -on -one with a discussion where I could ask you questions and figure out what you really want to do in your document and then draft the document to fit what you're trying to do. You can't do that online for the most part. You just took my next comment away from me, and that was that I've known Joe a long time, and, and uh, he's my go-to person if I need... And that is the value of a good attorney is they ask the questions when, right. when you're sitting in there, uh, questions that the lay person would never, ever, ever, ever think of it. Well, suppose you came to me and said, I just want to leave everything to my children, and mm -hmm. I didn't ask you any questions. And then one of those children was a grandchild, and that's who you really wanted to leave it to, but you meant to say my children and grandchildren, but you know, unless you ask questions about how old they are, uh, and are they financially responsible? And do you want to give it to them all at once? Or do you want to do a little stretch? And do you have a retirement account? And do you want to have that go all at once? Or do you want to stretch that out over, over time? And there are just a lot of questions you ask uh, when you're trying to do a document to, to get it the, to suit the needs of the person you're doing it for. So you have to be very specific. Uh, if you go to see your attorney, I think it'd be a good idea to make a list of your own questions. But the good attorney will ask you uh, your questions. Okay, what if someone is a resident of more than one state, and uh, would my will and trust, if say I moved to uh, California or something, does it work there? Well, you're only a primary resident of one state, but if you move from one to another, you should have the documents reviewed and maybe modified for the new state. Uh, but if you were a Florida resident, had your documents in Florida, and moved to California and died before you did anything, one state will honor another state's uh, documents and contracts, but it'd be better if you could get them reviewed and updated in, in the new state. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm at the point right now I need to come in and review. Do you, do you have a timeline of how often this kind of document should be reviewed? I try to send my uh, clients a letter for every three years. They should be updated about every, or reviewed every three years. Because things change, don't they? Yeah, there's no charge when their office, there's no charge to review uh, clients for a new, uh, documents for a new client or review and have a meeting with old clients that should come back in about every three years. A lot of times, um, power of attorneys and health care surrogates and living wills are the things that really need to be updated. And a lot of times, their will and trusts are just fine unless there's been a major tax law change or something like that. Mm -hmm. Jill once visited us during the Christmas season and before we talked business, I asked him about his Christian faith. Well, I was raised in a Christian home. My uh, dad was the superintendent of Sunday schools as a volunteer job. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> all of the Sunday schools used to meet together before they used to separate out into their groups. Mm -hmm. And I had taken uh, piano lessons for five years. So I think one time they didn't have a piano player. So they, got, they dragged me up there to play the song. And it happened to be Rock of Ages. And the big joke was everybody was out of breath when, they, when I finished. I did a little <laughs> fast, fast beat to it. But um, I was raised in a Christian home. I think I was born again, really, though, after I moved to Florida. Mm -hmm. um, I enrolled our kids in a Christian school. And the pastor came out one night and uh, asked me all those questions and kind of led me back. We, I guess we'd strayed a little bit and stopped going to church a little bit when, mm -hmm. uh, after college and starting working and going to night law mm -hmm. school. Uh, but I remember that day he came in there, and I, I remember uh, accepting Jesus as my Lord and Savior. Now, I was baptized early when I was a kid, but I think it really took yeah, a little I've bit later in life. Yeah, and I've known you a long time, very steadfast, devoted uh, churchman. And how long have you been married to Beverly? Beautiful Beverly. We got married in 1969, so 43 years. Yeah, 
Well, uh, I also wondered, uh, at what age did you decide you want to be a, an attorney? Well, I used to watch Perry Mason as a kid, and that I think I, get, <laughs> I got hooked. Um, he always won. Yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. He had a good staff, and I uh, really didn't know what kind of law I wanted to practice, but I knew I wanted to help people. I think that's my, 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 one of my gifts is to just want to help people. Yeah, and that was my next question. Uh, why wills and trusts and all instead of crime or family? Yeah, I think everybody, every attorney that goes through law school wants to be a prosecutor or defense attorney or criminal attorney. That's kind of what you're thinking about when you go in. I never really wanted to do that. Um, I, fir I didn't start practicing law until I was 35 and I was in my third career when I started that. I'd actually never been in the law office when I started my own practice and uh, went out. In that first year, I did everything. I did bankruptcy, I did criminal, I did divorce law, and uh, I just gravitated into estate planning, primarily is what I do. I have other attorneys who do other areas, but it just seemed uh, quick and easy. It was a big service, everybody was happy, a lot of people had been wanting to do it for a long mm -hmm. time, so I just found a little niche uh, basically and I would say I think it's more important now than it ever was. Now we're going to talk about uh, legal New Year resolutions and I've heard the term bucket list. I think it came out of a movie. Yeah. Somebody, uh, they wanted to do all this before they, you know, right. left this world. So um, for a more probably updated a state, look. Probably estate planning wasn't on that list though. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not, but I thought maybe people could, could relate a little bit. So, uh, what do you think is the most, I think people feel really overwhelmed when they think about this, so it's really easy to put it off. Right. And uh, you're not going to die tomorrow, so you can just do it tomorrow, right? Yeah, I mean, that's yeah. what they think. I usually say people like to put off estate planning because they don't like uh, dealing with dying. Mm -hmm. They don't like dealing with partying with their uh, assets and friends, and some people don't like attorneys. Now, I don't understand that one. Yeah. But, right. No. <laughs> but uh, they just put it off, put it off, put it off. And most people that come to my office that have put it off for a long time, they're just so relieved because it didn't take that That's long. Right. It didn't cost that much, and they got one more thing they can check off their list of things to do. And there, you can just see a peace come over them when they finally get this done. Mm -hmm. On one of the homekeepers programs. We talked about the value of talk radio and the great opportunity for listeners to talk directly to professionals, whether it be medical, doctors, financial planners, or attorneys. Well, I, I remember one lady called in and wanted to know if she could probate her own will. Now, you have to die before your <laughs> will know. goes through probate, so it's impossible to do that yourself. It's a good thing you were on radio and, because you might have had an interesting look on your face on television. <laughs> I think I've been asked so many questions, I don't, my expression doesn't change too much <laughs> most of the time. So this lady, though, what made it even more interesting was she didn't quite understand, so I had to explain it about three times. And a lot of people will call me and not like the answer, so they'll try to rephrase it slightly, hoping for a different answer. But I usually come back with the same answer, and then they sometimes they get a little frustrated. Mm -hmm. I had one man that called, and he was talking so slow, which is just not good mm -hmm. for people listening to radio. I mean, he was, you, you could, he would talk, I can't even, I don't even want to take the time to tell you how slow he was talking. Mm -hmm. But so I finally got him to tell me what the problem was, and he said, um, he said, well, the funeral home director was giving him trouble because he couldn't get the gold from his m mother's teeth from the funeral. And then, you know, I didn't know, I was so taken back by the question, I, I kind of chuckled and I said, well, and then in his very slow way of talking, he said I, that I was going to laugh at him like everyone else has with that question. Aww. So now I'm on live radio talking to this fellow who talks extremely slow. And now I've got to answer why, to tell him I wasn't laughing at him. I was just kind of pausing to think about how I was going to answer this question. Mm -hmm. But I have questions like a guy back in the 80s when you did, the service stations used to check your oil. Mm -hmm. Some guy went into a service station and they, they bent his dipstick, you know, and that was a question oh, about... Oh, I need a well, lawyer. <laughs> so I've had some um, crazy questions. It's been a lot of fun, though. And I don't, uh, unlike most shows, I don't screen my calls. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'll take almost take any a chance, yeah. Yeah, take uh, any any question, and the ones that are more entertaining and not so educational, but just entertaining. Gotta mix it up. That that makes for fun radio. I mean, that's what talk radio is all about. It's just uh, what, what is what's the kind of the theme of the most popular question? Is it is it the trust? Is it the will? 
Well, I think the most popular theme generally is uh, estate planning because that's my primary practice area. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in between calls or something as interesting has happened in the world of mm -hmm. estate planning or maybe even something with, with my clients, I'll talk about, uh, about that topic briefly. So I talk more about estate planning than I do other issues for the most part. After knowing Joe Pippen for more than three decades, I believe it was the consistency of his life and testimony that was most impressive. It was evident as the husband of his dream girl, Beverly, his sweet and faithful wife for more than 50 years. As for his sons, Trey and Troy, their admiration for their father knew no bounds. He encouraged his Christian clients to leave behind a testimony for their loved ones. And for those of us privileged to know him, he has left a strong, never to be forgotten example. My treasured colleagues here at the Christian Television Network join me in offering our love to his family and pray that they will truly sense the presence of the God of all comfort. I think we've been watching some clips of a life well lived. And I've asked my friend uh, Herman Bailey to join me because he knew Joe Pippen before I did. Yeah. And um, he's just been a blessing around this network. He's yeah. been on programs with Bob DeAndre. Oh, yeah. But also, I think as you get older and you measure people's, people's lives. We're old. You think about, yeah, we're old. Okay. We both have great grandchildren, <laughs> yes, by the sir. way. We've been buddies for 45 years. At least, yeah. yeah. I think, I think the thing I admire the most is the consistency yeah. of a person, and that would describe Joe Pippen. Joe Pippen, I, uh, and also patience. Did you ever listen to his "Ask an Attorney"? I heard just clips I, of it from time to time. I would listen to whole programs, depending on where I was going or whatever. Listen on. And I think it was the longest running of that type program Yes, it was, in Tampa ever. Bay. Uh -huh. Yes. Anyway, he had the most awesome patience. Mm -hmm. Because I did radio for three years. You know, you call in, talk live with Herman <laughs> Bailey. And the reason I admired him, he would get, <laughs> he would get, these people would ask him questions about something pertaining to their wills or their children yeah. or what they should do or what kind of will and what was included and they would they would ask the question and he would answer it and then they would go right back and answer ask the question again and and he would just as calmly he wouldn't say excuse me you just asked <laughs> you just asked the question he had the most calming voice mm -hmm. it's, it's like you, you'd go is there any way to make this guy mad and the answer would be no Never saw that manifested in uh, his family life. That says a lot about a man. Yeah. And He was your attorney too, right? Oh, yeah. And Sharon and I. Yes. And uh, he was very kind to my mother. Uh, we needed her to sign something when she was 98. Yeah. And took her to the office. She could still sign. And, boy, she bantered back and forth with him. And let, let me tell you a quick story. A friend of mine, his dad, and he was the only child, he, he had no idea, and his dad was very old, and he had no idea how to ask his dad about his estate. He said, he never share ever anything with me. And so he told me, he said, but you know who he loves? He watches your program and he sees you with, with Joe Pippen, the attorney. And I said, I tell you what, mm -hmm. bring, it was, he was about 50 miles away. Uh -huh. I said, bring your dad over, I'll take him to his office and, and let him ask him questions and lay out what he should have in his will. I mean, he trusted him so much. He was sitting there, and 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 the son could not believe everything yeah. that he had. He opened up to Joe Pippen, and he told him exactly what he would do and what he needed to do. Well, I, I think it was only a couple of years later he passed. Everything if that hadn't right. happened, you know, oh. you know, I mean, the probate would have had a had a killing that, on what he left. Yeah, that was probably the type of person because of his age and all, 
uh, that you set yes. up for him to right. meet Jill, uh, who didn't like attorneys, probably scared to death of them. Well, that's, that's why he told me. He uh -huh. said, my dad will never talk to him. He said, because he don't trust him. Uh -huh. and, and he said, but he loves Joe Pippen. He would watch him on mm -hmm. the program because he just communicated mm -hmm. honesty, love, and he had that calming demeanor. Mm -hmm. And so he was Always willing to meet with him. And you and I and Sharon, your wife, were at his memorial. Yes. And fabulous. I have played for dozens and dozens, I'd say maybe hundreds of funerals in my life, played organ. And uh, that funeral service tells a lot about the departed. Yeah. And uh, boy, yeah. he was honored in this day of COVID. It yeah. was a really fine yeah. turnout, fine yeah. audience and all. And the things that were said, how he, he flew, I think, to the uh, Northwest with a pastor to address churches, which he did generously, yeah. generously. Charlie five, Martin would take him on yes. these trips, yes. Yeah, and five people were there, and yeah. this man, like Joe, signed yeah. up. After Joe left, about two weeks later, that man gave $500,000 to the church, which was that outgrowth of Joe, the giver, the giver, the giver. He'd yeah. go to churches, he'd go anywhere to help people. Oh, absolutely. Well, I, I mean, the fact that he was walking with his high school sweetheart mm -hmm. on the sand on a beach in Jacksonville, Florida. Mm -hmm. Gone just like that. Just like that. And he called her his dream girl, uh, Beverly, his wonderful wife of more than 50 years. And on his phone, if he needed to call her, her name wasn't there. It was Dream Girl. Wow. He had Dream Girl and wow. would talk to her. Just overall, uh, life well lived. His sons admired him so much. Oh, my goodness. I, I actually did this. I told my son, I was talking to him the next day. I said, I want to get his sons uh, what he talked about his dad and have you memorize it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that, that was beautiful. We are about out of time, but... Um, Really wanted to honor a wonderful guest who has been with this network for at least 35 years on some regular basis. And I've often thought of the wonderful people in Nebraska yeah. and Kansas and all that didn't know anything about a will or a trust. He introduced it to them and probably helped thousands of people he never knew about. Please join me next time remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a Homekeepers program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.